What else is out? Tell us something. The Iron new. Claw, yes. new movie by Sean Durkin, who made Martha Marcy May Marlene, which I loved, and The Nest. Also directing credits on the Alice Birch update of Dead Ringers on Prime. Inspired by the true story of the Von Erich family, who became American wrestling superstars. Holt McElhaney is Fritz Von Erich, domineering former wrestler, now raising his sons to follow in the family business with ominous consequences. The Iron Claw is his signature move. He has passed this down to his son. It's a good term also, not just for the wrestling move, but for the grip he and the profession have over the family who are trapped within the iron claw of his legacy. Zac Efron is Kevin, who is lined up to become a champion. Jeremy Allen White is Kerry, whose Olympic dreams are dashed when the US pulls out of the Moscow Olympics in 1980, so he has to come back into the fold. Harris Dickinson is David, um, not as bulky as his brothers, but still a contender. Stanley Simons is Mike, who prefers playing music in his band, but who is nonetheless pulled, drawn, godfather-like into the fold. Kevin thinks his dad is too harsh on Mike, but their mum, Doris, played by Moriti, and he says, just sort it out between yourselves. There is talk of a family curse. Another brother died when he was young. Kevin thinks that somehow doom surrounds them. When he hooks up with Pam, played by Lily James, he tells her about the Von Erich curse that came to his father when his father changed his name from Atkinson to Von Erich. The name comes at a price. Yes, it makes them famous, but it comes with a price. He's also wedded to the idea that, first and foremost, his dedication is to his family. And when she asks him what he dreams of, he says just that. Here's a clip. I want to be with my family. You know, be with my brothers. Mm, that's sweet. What do you like to do with your brothers? Anything. I don't know. Just being together, we can do anything. Hmm. <laughs> what about you? Well, I want to be a vet. I want kids. I want my own practice. I want a man who's okay with that. Cool. So would you be okay with that? Oh, damn right I would. <laughs> we could be one of those modern super couples. <laughs> we could have our own ranch. Everyone could come live with us, all my brothers, their families. Okay. Did you know anything about the story of the Von Erich family? No. No, because what I know about wrestling, nothing. So the first thing I did was I looked at the wiki page in which it says, the story of the Von Erich family has been presented as a cautionary tale about parental influence, sibling rivalry, and the various dangers of the professional wrestling business. What I know about wrestling is what I've seen in movies. So Mickey Rourke in The Wrestler is that kind of wounded bear being battered around the circuit, dragged from ring to ring. More recently, Gal Garcia Bernal, who was brilliant in Cassandra, in which he plays an exotico, uh, who became a hero on the luchador circuit. This is somewhere between the wrestler and Cassandra with Foxcatcher being the sort of third oh, right. part of the okay. sort of triangulation that it's, you know, there's stuff, there is, there is tragedy out there that you, you know, you, which I didn't know about beforehand. As I said, this is quite a famous story. I didn't know about it. So on the one hand, the film is all about the pain of the world of wrestling, you know, for all its fakery, for all its theater, for all its characters, you get thrown, you get bashed, you get hurt. I mean, those things are real, but it's also a film about family and masculinity in which the beatings in the ring are pretty much nothing compared with the beatings that are dished out at the dinner table by the overbearing patriarch father who effectively rules the family with an iron rod. It turns out, in fact, that as the various unfolding tragedies unfold, the real story is actually has a whole other character who also in, involved tragedy. The, the, the director said it was one more tragedy that the film couldn't withstand. When a director says real events were so you know dark that we actually backed off from them, you know that what you're dealing with is a story that is full. With as I said at the very beginning, this sense of curse. Um, there are there's lots of use of pop songs. Uh, Don't fear the reaper. Tom Sawyer. There's also a great score by Richard Reed Parry, which reminded me occasionally of Neil, York's, Neil Young's work on Jim Jarmusch's Dead Man, which is a score that I really, really like. The thing about it is that for a film that's essentially about really big, bulked up guys, and I mean, they are, when you first see Zac Efron, I mean, he's, um, he's almost unrecognizably hench, to use the word that, is that right? apparently. But it's also, it's very tender and it's very moving. And watching it, I started thinking, this is this is almost the movie that Pain and Gain would be if it had been made by a man with a soul rather than a void. 
Uh, Durkin's work has always been about people. It's about characters that you come to know and get involved with. And for all the 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 bulk and the heft and the wrestling, which looks really convincingly real, um, it's about the inner turmoil. It's about loneliness and it also has a as a thread of you know of redemption which is kind of runs at the heart of the story and it does that thing that gr- great drama does that takes a subject that you're and I would say that this was true of both both the wrestler and Sandra that you 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 become invested in the characters even though i have absolutely no interest in wrestling at all and i thought it was yeah oddly moving and oddly tender for a film that is in great part about very big blokes smashing other very big blokes onto a very hard floor. Yeah. Good cast. When you great cast. Yeah. And a great director and a, and a, and a very dark, but you know, we said, um, you know, cautionary tales, true life story. 